Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of the Learning Free Cad for Beginners. Today we're going to be looking at two file types and they're the most common file types that we see in the world of CAD and 3D and that's STL files and STEP files. We're going to be learning the difference between those two files and how to manipulate those in FreeCAD so we can understand how to use files that we can download from the internet or that are given to us by someone else and work on those and remix those. I'm going to be using a part that I've made in FreeCAD and the exported versions of those in both STL and STEP to demonstrate this subject. So I hope you're enjoying these videos and let's have a look at these two file types. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So look at the model that I've designed. We can see we have a body here that we've created in something like the part design. Number of operations, and we end with the fillet. When I export this out from, say, file export, we get a number of file types to choose from. We're interested in the STL and the step file. Now notice that STL has both STL and ASTL. One's a binary version, the STL, and the AST is an ASCII version. So that is text. It's advisable to go for the binary version, the .STL. And that's defined by actually supplying the .stl or the .ast on the end of the file name. We also got the step file. That's got two file extensions. One's .stp and the other one's .stp. You can select either or. So there's a case of just selecting it and using the save to export out. There are settings in FreeCAD. Go over to the preferences and go into import export and we look along here we can see step and we can decide what we want to change in there. The step file that's exported is here on the right and you can see there's a difference between the step and the STL. The step file looks very similar to what's been built actually in FreeCAD for the part design but it doesn't have all the operations that will not come across in any step file. This is the geometry of the object itself, not the actions or the operations that make it up. The STL file, this one on the left, you can see straight away there's a difference. If I hover over the step file, all the faces are separated and all the edges are separated from that model as per the free cap build. Whereas the STL, it's all one face. So you can see the whole lot is highlighting as I hover over it. Whereas the step, we can select the edges, the faces, etc. This is quite important when it comes to editing these geometries. Now STL stands for Standard Triangle Language or Standard Tessellation Language. And we can see that from this model when we convert it to a part. So at the moment, this is actually a mesh. So we're gonna use the part workbench to change the STL into a part. If I click on it, we can see that it is in fact a mesh. So first thing we're gonna do is convert this to a shape. Come to part and create shape from mesh. It's gonna ask us to sew the shape and this closes any gaps in our object. So let's click on the sewing and we get into the tolerance for the sewing of the shape. I'm going to leave it with the defaults and hit OK. Now the shape is sewn, we can see a number of edges and faces have appeared. If we roll over this, you can see it's still flashing as one face. This is because the STL is still visible. Let's press the spacebar to hide it. And now you can see the faces are being highlighted. What we need to do is bring this around and reduce the amount of information that's in this shape. You notice that these here are planar surfaces. This one here and this one here. And you can see the triangles in here. And this is the tessellation in an STL file. Let's fix that by coming over to the part that's been created as a shape and come up to part and come down to create a copy and refine shape. This will refine the shape 
it will also fix problems with the placement. Before we refine the shape, let's have a look at the placement. Come up to the view, toggle axis cross. See where the axis cross is? Now let's click on this demo part, which we converted, and right click and hit transform. Notice that the handler for transformation is at the point of origin. So this is where it's been built and the handler is here. Let's move this. So what we need to do is take the object and place it where we want it to be using our axis cross in our scene. So I want the point of origin about here. Let's hit OK. Now when we click on this part, go up to part, create a copy and refine shape. Not only will that fix the plane of faces, so our faces will be reduced on this top, it will also fix the point of rotation. Now when we look at the object, we can see that the plane of faces are now all one face. And we've got this one here. So it's reduced the information in our model, but we still got this tessellation in here, these individual faces. There is one more step we have to do. Let's click on our refine part, cut part, and convert to solid. We now have a solid in here. Let's hide the previous part. And with that solid, we can create such things as boolean operations, splits, etc. So the only way to work with this is by using split apart and boolean operations to separate this out, add new features in there, add new geometry in there. And I actually do this in another video where I look at a landing gear and I will place the link of that in the description and the thumbnail and location on this video at this point. So let's venture in downloading STL files from the web and remixing those via FreeCAD. I'm just going to come over to Google and type in GrabCAD free STL. And we'll go to the GrabCAD site. Now this is a free site that we can sign up to and it has a large number of free STL files, step files, free model files of many different varieties. And you'll find what type of file is normally underneath here. So this is an STL file. And what I'm going to do is find something to download and we're gonna see the differences between the two and how easy it is to remix some of them. So I'm just looking through and trying to find one. So this is an STL file here, this one. So this is kind of something that we could download. This is quite useful. And we might want to remix that, add extra holes, extra ventilation, or some kind of feature on that. This is an STL file. So we come down, we can see the STL file here. And we're going to download one of these. Let's download this one. This part here. And we hit download file. So you can see I've downloaded a number of step and STL files already here. Just get an idea of what's out there. This one I haven't seen before. So we've got our main STL file. Over in FreeCAD, I've already started a new document. I'm currently in the part design. That may change. Let's go to file and import and come down to the file and open that up. Now, when we roll over this, you can see that it's one single face. First thing I do with these type of files is come over to the mesh design and see if they're made up of components. When something's made up of a component, this is like using the part workbench and the compound object. So it's saving out a compound object, a single output with multiple objects within. To check that, let's click on the STL file, and come up to meshes and go split by components. As you can see, there's only one component. So we'll delete that. So we've got no luck there. The trouble with this is that we can't really split it down into faces. We can use Boolean operations against it. We can pull it into a part design workflow as well as a base object. But the first thing we need to do is convert this to a shape. To do that, we come over to the part, click on the STL file and come up to part and create shape from mesh. This is a mesh at the end of the day. Once we click that, it's gonna ask us to sew the shape. 
I normally take the defaults. This will close any gaps in the shape. That could cause problems in the future. Let's hit OK. This may take a little while depending on how complex the object is. As you can see, well, we can see that there's a number of faces in here. If I come over and hide the mesh, we can now roll over these faces and we can see them there. Now, if we look, these faces are all along the same plane. We can merge faces that are on the same plane by clicking on the shape and coming out to part and come down to create a copy and refine shape. When we click on that, it will create a copy and refine it, taking out all those faces that are along the same plane. As you can see, we've got a much cleaner shape. And we can select the faces. So we've got more of a chance of creating a successful loft, pad, pocket, etc. with this object. It makes our life a lot easier. We could use the part workbench and say create a cylinder. and transform that if we want to use a part workflow and say, okay, I want to keep the one we want to remove, control set them both and use a cut. So you can see simple balloon operations take effect quite easily on that. So control set that. We can also select the faces as usual and create sketches on there. mapping the flat face and creating what we want on here. And using Boolean operations to extrude and remove that part. If you want to use this, say in a part design workflow, we can come over to the part design and create a body and drop the shape inside the body. And this will create a base reference the shape will be made invisible. So this is the refined shape. Once that base feature has been added, we can select the face, create a sketch, and create some geometry on here, such as a slot. Hit close, select the sketch, and pocket that. Notice that the object has disappeared. This tells me something, that there is another step what we have to do. So let's cancel that. I'm going to delete the base feature and the sketch from the body and bring back our shape. Our shape is probably not a solid, it's probably a shell. So let's come back to the part and come up to the part and convert to solid. That's now converted to a solid and we can hide the shape. Now when we take this solid and place it into the body. It'll create the base feature. And let's see what luck we have now. So I'm going to come over to the part design and select the face, create a sketch. This will map flat face to that object and then create our slot. Hit close. And now we take that sketch and create the pocket. One thing you'll notice is how slow this is running and this is because of the STL file. If this was a step file then this will be much quicker. So we can see we've got that taken there so the pocket has now taken because it's a solid. Previously it was a shell. Let's see the difference with a step file. So we've got the step file back and you can see it's made up with faces, edges, vertices, etc. We can use the same process of part split apart or Boolean operations in here. For instance, I can take this sphere, click the one I want to keep, control click the one I want to remove and use union and Boolean options in here, union that in there, hit control Z and let's say a cut. So you can see how quick that is compared to the STL file. Control Z that and delete that sphere. Another way of breaking this apart and remixing it is coming up to the draft workbench. Within the draft workbench, we have a number of tools, one of which is the modifications and upgrade and downgrade. 
These downgrade the selected object into simpler shapes. The result will depend on the type of object that you're downgrading or upgrading. For instance, if we take the step file, if we downgrade this, we get a number of faces. So at the moment, all the faces are connected together. Let's come up to the modifications and use downgrade. Look what happens with the tree view. We have a number of faces in here. If I click on one, you can see the faces highlighted on the left hand side. Press the space bar and we can see inside that object. So this allows us to remove parts of the object. For instance, I may want to remove these top faces here by hitting delete. And that's delete this part as well. And maybe this part. So we've got rid of the internals in here. I can now come over to the part workbench and start filling in parts of this with say a ruled surface or even could come over to the surface workbench and create additional geometry against this and create surface that link up. Let's come back to the part workbench and start using something like the ruled surface to create surfaces against here. Let's close this gap. Let's first start by creating a surface against here. Going across, control clicking those edges, ruled surface, and a ruled surface against these two. Using the ruled surface. I'm going to close the gap by taking these edges using the ruled surface. Now I can close the gap across here, which will leave me a nice curve because it's going to follow the contour of these surfaces. So we look at this, we can see this is curved outwards. So if I take this curve and this edge and create a ruled surface, you can see how that's gone in there. We've got a bulge going outwards like so. We could do this with the surfacing workbench and create, say, a sketch in here with an arc and surface against those. So we've got videos of how to create surfaces with sketches in the Learning FreeCAD series, and the same applies to this. Let's come around to the other side and close this surface here. Again, I'm going to use the arc and this edge. Control click those and create a ruled surface. And we'll create this feature in here. So we've changed our geometry. We can obviously use the splitting to split this apart and we can rejoin these all back together by clicking them all, highlighting all of them, making sure that if we come into the ruled surface, we have the other faces as well. Like so, control click in those. The same with this one. I can see I've missed two, so I'm going to control select those faces from here. We need to be in the draft workbench, modifications, upgrade. We now have a shell. So we've got a shell there. That means we've missed some faces. So you can see two faces have been missed there. If we've missed the faces, then we can control select those faces and then come out to modifications and upgrade. Therefore, we have this continuous object. And I can come back to the part workbench, click on that shell, part, convert to solid. Now we have a solid. So I've started a new document and we're gonna look at a step file now. And I've chosen this one here and this can be downloaded from GrabCAD again. And I've just done a search for step this time. So I've come out to the search and just typed in step in here. And I've chosen this one here. I've already downloaded it. So let's come to FreeCAD file and come down to the import. And let's come down to the file itself. And straight away, you can see that we've just got faces in here. 
and it, this is also a solid object so we don't have to do any refinement we don't have to do any creation of a solid object to make sure it's a solid not a shell on the left hand side you also see that because this is part of an assembly we've got all the individual parts in here so this is very similar to the STL file if we had something similar in the STL and we had components in there we would come up to the mesh design and split by components and each of these individual parts would be a component but there will be one face one face per component as you can see we've got multiple faces in here and we can use these in the part design in the part workbench quite easily and they're a lot faster so any operations done against these will be very similar speed to what we would be doing in a normal FreeCAD model, as if they were created via FreeCAD. If we want to use one of these parts, say in the part design, we would have to say take this part here and drag it outside of its container. So it sits outside. Then we'll create a new body. We can drag that in like so to create a base feature. We can't, if I delete that base feature, drag them straight from inside the container into that body. It just won't allow us. We have to drag it out first. Also one thing to be aware of in the part workbench, if we come down to this drop down and select the part workbench, is that we got a defeaturing tool in the part workbench. So if I took this part here, let's hide the others by pressing the space bar on them. And if I've got a feature in here that I don't want, let's say I don't want these ears here or just one of them, I can click on it and come up to part and come down to defeaturing. That will remove that face. So you can see that face has been removed. Let's try another one. Let's take both of these part defeaturing. And you can see that wasn't removed. So you can see we can have some success with this. And other times, some of the features aren't removed. So that one's been removed there. And it's left this. Just going to control set that. We could use a normal pocket in here so we could pocket these out. Sometimes the defeature in will get us to a stage that is beneficial. Other times not. Once we've got this into, say, our body as a base feature, then we can add sketches to here in the part design. Let's come back to the part design and select this face and create a sketch. And we can select what we want on here. So let's create a slot and add our constraints. We can pull in geometry. So for instance, I can pull in this line here and make some symmetry against this point, symmetrical constraint, that's close, and we can pocket that. So make sure that sketch is selected and pocket that in. And set our depth. Features like this, well, we're gonna to have to use something like a pad to fill in that gap. like so, and then close that. We'll pad that, reverse, and set the distance. Okay, click on the pad, and we can come down to the refine as true. And that removes that from there. So as you can see, the STL file is quite easy to work with. So I hope that's given you a quick insight of how to use the STL files and step files, the differences between them, and how you can use those in the part design or the part workbench and reconfigure them how you want. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. 
any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.